This is your High Desert Sports Report. The Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Apple Valley's sophomore quarterback, Jaden Max Denegal, throws five touchdown passes in the Sun Devils' 62 to nothing victory over Barstow. The first coming two minutes in, a 62-yard scoring play to wide receiver Tyron Smith. 90 seconds later, the 64-yard TD, as Tyron Smith cuts to the middle and grabs the J. Max Denegal pitch, outrunning the Aztec secondary to score untouched. J. Max Denegal's eight-yard strike to Ethan Peratt gives Apple Valley a 34 to nothing lead in the first quarter. Kenyard Edwards Jr. sandwiched a pair of touchdowns between the second and third scoring passes, the longer this 23-yard run making it 20 to nothing, the other a one-yard blast up the middle. J. Max Denegal's one-yard scoring pass to Marquise Cato comes on the Sun Devils' first possession of the second quarter, making it 41 to nothing. Marquise Cato blocks the punt. Jeremy Justice the second picks it up at the 40 and runs it in for touchdown number seven on the night. The Sun Devils lead 48 to nothing at the half. J. Max Denegal's fifth scoring pass caps a 94-yard drive. Jeremy Justice the second, the reception at the Apple Valley 40. He races past one defender and turns around another on the play covering 60 yards. The running clock throughout the second half limits the Sun Devils to three possessions after the intermission. With backup players enjoying playing time, sophomore Damian Guillen makes the most of it. The 61-yard touchdown closes out the scoring as Apple Valley surpasses the 60 points total the second game in a row. Bid fast and lasts. Two-minute drill has shown eight of the nine Sun Devils touchdowns. Extended action highlights, including big plays defensively, forthcoming on our next Video Sports Online report. Bid fast and last, sold on supporting high desert sports. Bid fast and last, liquidation of government entities, vehicles, firearms, estates, antiques, fine jewelry, coins, and more. Bid online at bidfastandlast.com. Ready to kick tires, start fires, kick ass, take names, and rock and roll. Go, 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 go. Sultana Sultans and Hesperia Scorpions chalk up their first victories of the season. Granite Hills undergoes a grueling and controversial outcome at Little Rock. Serrano Diamondbacks and Apple Valley Sun Devils remain unbeaten, and Atalanto continues its climb toward the top of their division. With Granite Hills ranking as the number one team in the Max Prep Division 14 poll be jeopardized by the circumstances at Little Rock? The Cougars were leading 55 to nothing in the third quarter when an altercation broke out. The referees halted the contest and declared the outcome no decision. Granite Hills coach Alex Gonzalez appealed to CIF. It is not known at the time of this report how CIF responds. Max Prep did not drop the Cougars in their poll, keeping the 2-1 Cougars at number one, but CIF did drop the Cougars to number five in their rankings. Serrano maintains their standing in both polls, winning convincingly at Yucaipa to remain undefeated and rank number two among Division 7 teams. Coach Casey Mahalchek's Diamondbacks have a tough home game next against Highland. Those Bulldogs from Palmdale are ranked number three in Division 9. The Saints of Atalanto, winners by a wide margin at Bassett, Coach Gali Wadud's ranks are ranked number five in Division 12 by CIF as they prepare for Sultana in one of two games this week matching DSL against MRL schools. The Sultans got three touchdowns by Nathaniel Glass last week in ringing up their first win 21-7 over Victor Valley. Apple Valley remains with Serrano as the lone undefeated teams among MRL and DSL schools having left the remains of the Aztecs of Barstow scoreless as the Sun Devils improved to 3-0. Coach Matt Rohrbaugh sees his Sun Devils ranked number six in Division VI again this week. Next, we ring in the 51st edition of the Battle for the Bell. Victor Valley hosting Apple Valley. 
Beautifully resurfaced Raymore Stadium on the Jackrabbits campus is the venue, Artificial Turf, the surface for the first time in Bell Game history. The 2019 contest is again being featured as one of the 100 games this season showcased in the Great American Rivalry Series, sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps. The winning team will receive the Great American Rivalry Series Championship Trophy, an MVP will be selected, and a player from both Apple Valley and Victor Valley will be awarded a scholarship by the Marines. Elsewhere this week, Oak Hills continues its grueling schedule. The one and two Bulldogs have Grace Brethren in Hesperia. The visiting Lancers are the number one team in Division Three. Hesperia tries for two wins in a row, taking on El Taloma on the Scorpions campus. The Silverado Hawks are at home, taking on another 0-3 team, the Corona Panthers. Valu Quality Truck Bodies, action highlights of high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. Valu manufactures state-of-the-art truck bodies for the construction industry nationwide. Family owned and operated in the high desert since 1954. Valu Quality Truck Bodies, supporting teams, schools, and athletes throughout the Victor Valley. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. Bid fast and last, world-class auctioneers, family-owned and operated liquidation experts. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. Valu Quality Truck Body, family owned and operated since 1954. Valu manufactures state-of-the-art truck bodies for the construction industry nationwide. Desert High Transportation, reliable and dependable non-emergency transportation for ambulatory and wheelchair passengers. Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. Apple Valley's explosive offense surpasses 60 points for the second game in a row, and the Sun Devils' defense registers its first shutout of the season in the 62 to nothing blowout of Barstow. After giving up one touchdown to Silverado in their season opening win and three touchdown passes to Granite Hills the following week, Coach Matt Ruerbaugh's Devils defense sharpens their tridents and deny the Aztecs any penetration into the red zone. Barstow is its own worst enemy at the outset, fumbling the ball away on their first play from scrimmage. Linebacker Brandon Pedroza, 34, the recovery. It would be a slow road to recovery for Barstow's offense. The Aztecs had scored but three points total in their earlier losses to Serrano and Highland. The Sun Devils had recovered an onside kick following their first touchdown. Senior strong safety Christian Mercado, four, coming up with the ball. Leading the Blackshirt defenders in the early going, 17, Ryan Webster, the 6'3", 245-pound defensive end who was the Mojave River League's only first-team selection on both defense and offense the season prior. He's actually closer to 6'4", 260. Aztec Elias Ramirez game opening kickoff is taken by Jeremy Justice the second. Barstow kick coverage is excellent. Six is Michael Kane, six foot two hundred twelve pound senior. Eighty eight Carson Brogan, forty one Lolofi Chanwong, both sophomores. Jaded Max Denigal goes to the air first play from scrimmage. Junior wide receiver Gavin Velasquez the receiver. 14 completions and five scoring passes later, the sophomore quarterback reveals offensive coordinator Robert Maris's game plan. Uh, the Jay, what was the priority of the offense uh, as this game was underway? Uh, the priority of the offense today was to sharpen up the passing game, get us going, get us flowing. The last two games we did a lot of power run, but we want to sharpen up our pass game so we can get into it. Great game today. Congratulations. Keep it going. Thank you. More of the Sun Devils hit the ground throwing offense first down the Barstow 45, J. Max Denigal to Ethan Peratt for nine yards to the 36. Ethan Peratt, six foot, 180 pound junior. 
Second and one at the 36, J-Max Denical rolls to his right, reverses course, and scrambles for a first down before wrestled down by Aztec sophomore Damian Soto. Gain of 13 on the play, J-Max Denigal is listed at 6'4", 196. Following the Sun Devils' penalties, this is third and eight back at the 43. Watch six foot, 240 pound Derek Cox, 66, against 6'5", 305 pound Daniel Gonzalez, 77. Tyron Smith for a first down. Four passes caught on the night for the 6'1", 180 pound junior wide receiver. A holding penalty backs the Sun Devils to the 36. Tyron Smith on the slant pattern Touchdown number two on the night, and a 13 to nothing lead, two and a half minutes in. Apple Valley scores five touchdowns in the first four minutes, but only three of them count as holding penalties force them to resume scoring drives further back. Kenyard Edwards Jr. scores Sun Devils touchdown number three from 23 yards out. It's 20 to nothing. One game plan priority, sharpening the passing attack. Another, working on onside kicks. And the special teams play meets with as high a percentage of success as the aerial attack. Three onside kick recoveries on the night. Sophomore Gavin Hambrick with the recovery following the third Sun Devils touchdown. Kenyard Edwards Jr. makes it 27 to nothing on his second TD of the night, a one-yard run with 638 showing on the Newton T. Bass Stadium scoreboard clock. 11 touchdowns on the season for the 5'9", 175-pound senior running back. The Sun Devils' fifth possession begins at their own 39 following an Aztec punt. It requires overcoming another flurry of penalties. Play six in the drive. The 44-yard completion to Tyron Smith. The eight-yard scoring strike to Ethan Peratt caps the seven-play 61-yard drive. Second touchdown reception on the season for Ethan Peratt. 34 to nothing to score at the end of the first quarter. And now, three acts of the Marquis Cato Show. J. Max Denigal's near-perfect 15 of 19 night, benefiting from a couple of exceptional catches on the part of his receivers, Marquis Cato, the diving reception here. This is the first Sun Devils possession of the second quarter, the scoring pass to Marquis Cato, 41 to nothing. Marquis Cato, 5'9", 160 pound, junior. Marquis Cato on defense, blocking the punt. Jeremy Justice the second, scoop and score from 40 yards out. The Sun Devils lead 48 to nothing at the half. The Aztecs had deployed a strategy to slow down the Sun Devils offense by way of ball control, exhaust the play clock between plays, burn as much time off the running clock, so to keep the ball out of the hands of the home team Sun Devils, as opposed to trying to score quickly and get back into the ball game. Barstow's running game meets with some success at this point, sustaining their longest first half time of possession and advancing to near midfield before the second quarter expires. Third quarter action. Coach Kurt Mitchell adds some wrinkles to the attack plan, the inside reverse, Joe Hardy, the ball carrier. The Aztecs move into Apple Valley territory for the first time. The drive set back on this gang tackle effort by Sun Devils defenders. On fourth and five near midfield, the quick kick surprises the Sun Devils and pins Apple Valley all the way back to their six. But it is from here that the offense again kicks the engine into high gear and resumes operating on all cylinders. The coaches emphasized at halftime, eliminate the penalties, holding penalties specifically. The plan of attack to start the second half, the same that began the game. J. Max Denigo, sideline pattern to Ethan Peratt, who reaches up and pulls it down from the six out to the 29. Quick out the other way. Nine is Nathan Downing, 5'11", 160 pound sophomore. From the 40, 
return engagement in the scoring column for Jeremy Justice II. J. Max Denigal's fifth scoring pass, Jeremy Justice II, brilliant open field running, racing past one defender and turning around another on the play covering 60 yards. It is 55 to nothing. The goal of securing the shutout has now fallen onto the shoulders and into the hands of Sun Devil's non-starters on defense. Barstow's two-way starter and offensive workhorse, Sean Illy, plowing ahead for first down yardage, Sean Illy, 5'9", 190-pound junior. Fourth quarter action, Michael Wong among the tacklers, Michael Wong, 38. 5'10", 165 pound, junior free safety. The running clock in effect throughout the entire second half limits Apple Valley to three offensive possessions. They score on their first two. Sophomore running back Damian Guillen closes out the scoring with his 61 yard sprint to the end zone. The Sun Devils' 62-point performance gives them 172 points in three games, a 54-plus points-per-game average. Going into their next game, the Bell Game, at Raymore Stadium in Victorville. This online sports report served up by Down Home Grill. Down Home Grill serves delicious burgers from organic grass-fed beef. The best organic eggs, senior breakfasts for just six bucks. 760-241-4663 for call-in orders. Down Home Grill, located at the corner of Delicious and Nutritious. Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive in Victorville. The Victor Valley College Rams open the season hosting L.A. Valley Saturday, September 1st. We flash back to the 2017 Rams home opener. Mighty Sean White scores the winning touchdown in the Victor Valley College Rams 24-21. Come from behind victory over West Los Angeles. The all-conference fullback carries the Rams offense on his back and leads coach Dave Hoover's 2017 troops to their second win of the season. Former the Red Barstow Aztec, Eric Parra, kicks off. Former Granite Hills Cougar, Carlos Mahares, four, and James Zachary, 37, the tacklers. The Rams' opening offensive series begins from their own 31. 320-pound Rocky Sua, 55 over the ball, the former Oak Hills Bulldog, with another former Bulldog at quarterback, Nolan Bramer. 50 is another former Oak Hills freshman, 310-pound Kevin Merrickin. Nolan Bramer takes to the air for the first time. 84 is Robert Evans, the 6'5", 275-pound tight end, playing on his former high school field at Silverado. Two plays later, Nolan Bramer hits Brayon Williams in the end zone, and the Rams cap a very impressive opening drive. 11 plays, the 69-yard drive. Dominic Hernandez out of Eric Parra's hold, 7-0 Rams with 7-10 on the first quarter clock. PVC benefits from a roughing the passer penalty on this Nolan Bramer attempt to Mike O'Bonham. The Victor Valley College Rams get a pair of second quarter touchdown passes by freshman quarterback Evan Nelson within a 21 second time span against LA Valley. The first to Kadeem Richards from four yards out. Evan Nelson leaves the pocket, rolls left, then sidearms it to Samaj Brewer in the end zone on the scoring play from 15 yards out. Takeaways by a pair of former Silverado Hawks set up both touchdowns. Dana Jenkins with the pass interception at midfield preceding the first VBC score. Dana Jenkins, the outstanding defensive back out of Silverado. He is 6'2", 200 pounds, his second season playing for coach Dave Hoover's Rams. The Rams' first scoring drive shows Evan Nelson connecting twice with wide receiver Andrew Glass, the former Granite Hills Cougar. Next play, the crossing pattern. Andrew Glass, not reluctant to run the inside route, 18 yards on this reception to the six. Andrew Glass leads Rams receivers this game with four passes caught for 66 yards. Evan Nelson rolls right, resets, spots Kadeem Richards in the end zone, Look, ref, no hands. The Rams 
are on the scoreboard. Former Hesperia Scorpion, Mark Vasquez, ties the score at seven. Mark Vasquez kicks off following BBC touchdown number one. Cameron Spratley, 45, recovers the loose ball. Cameron Spratley, 6'1", 230 pound sophomore linebacker, a former Silverado Hawk. Rams have it at the 25. Four plays later, the Rams go ahead on the Evan Nelson to Samaj Brewer touchdown pass from 15 yards out. Scoring plays from the Victor Valley College Rams season opener brought to you by Griner Buick GMC. Griner Buick GMC brings you Victor Valley College Sports Online Reports presented by Griner Buick GMC in Victorville. Griner supports Victor Valley College Rams. A milestone victory for Ricky Racer. A mighty finish for J-Doggy Jaden Manchester. A triumphant return for the Iceman. Hot August night action at Wheel to Wheel in Victorville. Experience trumps youth in this KT100 competition as seasoned veteran Norma Weatherby overtakes just turned 11 year old Cash Culp in the first heat race of the day in the KT100 class. The start of a very successful night for Storman Norma, who races out of Covina. Stevie Rogers, dark three, and Ricky Simpson, white 29, start side by side in their first restrictor heat race encounter. But before a second full lap is completed, the turn three pile up. Ricky Simpson capsized. Stevie Rogers spun around. 13 is Riley Tippett's behind them. Jacob Scheindecker avoiding contact in his blue 38 on the restart. Trent Johnson slides ahead of Riley Tippett's to take the checkered. Trent Johnson, the youngest driver to ever win a wheel-to-wheel -wheel main event, will finish second in this night's restrictor main. Blue 84 is Will Brown, the youngest of the Pro 500 drivers, the 15-year-old from Glendora leading John Aiden in the early going of this heat race. John Aiden returning after a two-race hiatus. Will Brown gets the best of the Iceman in this dash to the checkered, setting up a showdown in this night's main. An even dozen staging for the intermediates, Maine. Stevie Simpson at the pole, Purple 51, Mia Farrell, 54, Junior Potside, 2, Sean Rogers, 16, Lydia Brown, Jaden Manchester starting 6th outside, 3rd row, 22, Liam Coffey behind him. Liam Coffey, age 6, youngest of the intermediates, Cash Culp inside row 4, followed by Ryan Shank the second, blue 8, Zayt Legend, black and orange, Z8, Seven is Alex Edsel, 11, Cole Brown. Clean up on aisle one results in a full restart. Coming off the backstretch, Stevie Simpson slides sideways. Junior Patsai cannot avoid him. Sean Rogers clips, flips, and bounces off the wall, landing down side up. Once they are untangled, all drivers are okay. Lined up for the restart, Stevie Simpson, Sean Rogers, Jaden Manchester is up to third. Second lap in, Jaden Manchester overtakes Stevie Simpson off the straightaway into and out of turn one. This is how they finish. Nine-year-old Jay Doggy wins. Stevie Simpson second, Sean Rogers third. And what went right tonight? Great racing. Um, I got first, and it's just that I started at six, and um, I... Actually, didn't think I would win, but I, I just kept focusing and focusing, and then I just finally got to the front. And then at the last lap, I'm like, I got this. The main event win keeps Jaden Manchester ahead in season points. He has 64, three ahead of Stevie Simpson. Cash Culp is in third with 50. Sean Rogers with 46 in fourth. Pro 500, Justin Taylor starts inside second row in this heat race, sprints into the lead, and wins going away. The 20-year-old out of Laguna Hills won the Pro 500 main the race prior. Justin Taylor sheds some light on what Justin, we just what saw. What about on that heat race? Are they combined uh, two heat races? Uh, a couple guys called in today and couldn't make it, so instead of having two smaller heats, we just combined it to one big one, make a better race. 
Are you and Dad starting off with a uh, renewed vengeance? I mean, both guns blazing. You guys were really aggressive. Yeah, I beat him last week because <laughs> he crashed out, but oh. I'm trying to do it again tonight. What about the track? Uh, windy night and uh, different track. Yeah, in between the races, John put on a whole bunch of new DG, so it's a different track, and we're filling it out, but it feels pretty good. This is the Pro 500, Maine, Chad Agri at the pole, Justin Taylor outside front row, Bobby Taylor inside second row, eight is teenager Will Brown, seven, John Aiden, the Iceman, starting to heat up. Like the intermediates, Maine, an early clean up on aisle one, Chad Agri and Will Brown relegated to the back of the pack on the restart. Justin Taylor makes a run at holding off John Aiden, leading the Iceman through the next seven laps before fading. John Aiden takes the lead and wins the race to the checkered. John Alonzo edges Will Brown for second. The Iceman builds his season points lead to 71 to 60 over Bobby Taylor, who ends the race at the wall. What's it gonna take to overtake these girls? These girls have kind of been ruling the restricted class. I just can't seem to beat them. I'm having a hard time. I'm hoping that I'll be able to beat them soon. Those comments from a Ricky Simpson interview two months earlier. Thank you. Setting up the milestone achievement of the night, 11-year-old Ricky Racer finally upsets season points leader Stevie Rogers and wins his first restrictor class main event. Ricky Simpson actually leads Green Flag to Checkered, the monumental accomplishment achieved by holding off the repeated attempts to overtake the challenger by the 15-year-old queen of the track and season points leader. The last ditch bid to take the lead on the straightaway, the white flag showing one lap to go, the contact nudging Stevie Rogers to the side and out of the running for a place on the podium this night. The four minutes of heart-pounding, fast-paced, and highly competitive racing action capped by Ricky Simpson's victory lap. KT100, Maine, a duel to the finish between experience and youth. Norma Weatherby starts in front and stays there, holding off Cash Culp. The win gives Norma Weatherby a six-point lead over Cash Culp in season points, 76-70. Dirt Carts Seniors Blaine Kuhn races to the checkered, building on his season points lead. The San Diego Tile and Stone Layer has 76 points. Heidi Jo Erickson is six points back in second. Jackson Sowers takes his victory lap after winning the Intermediates Juniors Maine. We have the biggest field of pit bikes, yet this season, circling the 1 8 mile oval, nine compete. The winner, John Stefinski. Another video sports interview this hot August night. Firehawks EMS Driver of the Week, eight-year-old Zate Legend of Riverside. Zate, what are your goals as we start the second half of this season? To win, to have fun, and to be safe. Now we've got a track tonight that's a little bit different. What adjustments do you make? Does it depend on how the heat races perform? Well, it depends how wet the dirt is, and uh, yeah, it just depends how the people are driving and how, the, how wet the dirt is. Well, thanks for these comments. Good luck tonight. Hope to see you on the podium when the night's over. Bid fast and last, sold on supporting high desert sports. Bid fast and last, liquidation of government entities, vehicles, firearms, estates, antiques, fine jewelry, coins, and more. Bid online at bidfastandlast.com. Ready to kick tires, start fires, kick ass, take names, and rock and roll. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. Bid fast and last, world-class auctioneers, family-owned and operated liquidation experts. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. Valu Quality Truck Body, family owned and operated since 1954. Valu manufactures state-of-the-art truck bodies for the construction industry nationwide. Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville. 
This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. 